All right, guys, welcome back to the former Farm Kid channel. Today, uh, we're going to be discussing how to calculate the value, the, or the volume rather, for uh, this particular area. The project here is a uh, crotch cut black walnut slab table with an epoxy resin fill. That's what this blue area is here. And just kind of give you a little overview of the whole table. Basically, we added uh, a pool of epoxy to even out the dimension of the table. As you can see, it's more or less uh, linear along this edge. But this edge had a big uh, kick in here. So to even it up a little bit, make it more rectangular, uh, we added what I call the shoreline effect. Here's the shore. Here's the lake water or ocean, as you prefer, to uh, the table to even up its dimensions. And our next video, we're going to talk about uh, how we did that, some of the different effects, uh, things that worked, things that didn't work. But today we want to talk about how to calculate this volume right here. So when calculating volume, it's easiest to try to equate the shape of our fill with a geometric figure that we're familiar with. So looking at this figure here that we need to fill, we can closely approximate this to a right triangle. So in this case, the ruler tape here, if you look at it like this, this would be the hypotenuse of the triangle. This, this right here would be the base. And then our long leg would be this side right here. So we can use the formula for the volume of a triangular prism because of course this area is going to have depth to it so it's a simple matter of just multiplying that third dimension to the area of a triangle to come up with a uh, volume amount for the triangular prism volume of this area and is it a precise amount uh, no obviously because we have a curved surface along here, which reduces the amount of epoxy needed because I am basically squaring the triangle off like this. So that would yield perhaps a little bit more. But generally speaking, because of all these uh, inclusions and imperfections in the bark, uh, and little gaps that we really cannot see, but the epoxy certainly does as it tries to fill in. Uh, it's, it's a good approximation anyway, because basically looking at uh, the epoxies that we use here for this particular project, uh, we used three different types of epoxies. And again, we'll go over this once we talk about the specifics of the table, but the, uh, the number one used epoxy, and I use the echo epoxy uh, because it doesn't smell. You can do it uh, in, in your home. My workshop's a little too cool in the winter time. I have to constantly uh, keep the heat on to keep the temperature right. So bringing my project up into my house is uh, advantageous as far as the temperature goes. This is a liter and a half, 1.6 liters, I believe. And <clears throat> it makes up the bulk of the pour. Uh, it can go up to an inch or so. Uh, I'd have to look up precisely how thick you can go, but you can go in layers as well. This and this, it's two parts. This and this, $197. This is for... Uh, the uh, flow cast uh, short or small pour uh, echo epoxy 
Uh, this is a leader kit and it costs $75. The last used pour is the top coat and it's to prevent the epoxy resin from clouding. It creates, uh, you, you do an eighth of an inch over the top at a time. You can go thicker than that. An eighth of an inch should be enough to protect what's beneath it. And this was $60. So when we're calculating volume of our pour, we like to be somewhat close so that we're not wasting this very expensive uh, resin. All right, so we're going to go over two examples of an epoxy resin for calculating the volume. Here is just one random example, for instance. What if I had a shape something like this? And yeah, it does kind of look like, you know, basketball court, uh, free throw line, basket here, perhaps. Uh, so what we have is a composite figure, a rectangular prism, in a semi-cylinder prism. If you can imagine this figure with depth to it, like our pour today, so we would have something like this. Da -da 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 -da. At any rate, you kind of get the idea. I'm not going to mess up my example here. So what we're doing is adding this volume to this volume to come up with total volume for, say, a pour that is 3 eighths of an inch deep. So if I'm on my rectangle, my calculation would be 3.75 times 4.875 times 3 eighths. And that gives me 6.9 cubic inches of resin for this part of this figure. For the semi-cylinder, the equation is, and by the way, this is length times width times height, for the semi-cylinder, the equation is pi times the radius squared. Two and a half inches would be the radius. Pi times radius squared times height or depth, however you want to look at it, uh, divided by two because we don't have a full cylinder here. It's a semi-cylinder or half a cylinder. So the calculation becomes pi times 2.5 squared times 0.375, which we get from 3 eighths, divided by two. And that equals 3.7 cubic inches. We add that to that. We come up with 10.6 cubic inches. Every cubic inch contains 16.3871 milliliters. So to get the number of milliliters of, of, of resin, I simply multiply the two, to get up, two together, and I come up with 173.4 milliliters. That's total volume, total pour. We then take that total and we can divide it by three because on the flow cast, uh, the flow class is, is mixed at a two to one ratio. The UV epoxy is mixed at a one to one ratio. That's pretty straightforward. But the two to one, keep in mind, that's three parts. And mathematically then, to determine how much of each you would add to your container, you would take and divide 173 by 3. And for the first pour of uh, resin, it's two parts. So it would be two times one third of 173. That's your, that's your total resin. And then that one third of 173 would be your part of the hardener. All right, for our table today that we just previously looked at, here's the actual calculation I used uh, to do my first pour, which was uh, the colored layer to give opaqueness so that you cannot see through it. Uh, once again, it was a triangle. The base, so the short side, was 10 inches. The long side along the edge of the table is 42 inches. So our formula is base times height times the depth of the pore, this area right here, divided by two. 
I used 3 eighths of an inch, which equates to 0.375, just 3 divided by 8. Uh, using decimals are handy when using a calculator. So here is my formula setup, and that yields 78 and 3 quarters, or 78.75 cubic inches of material that I'm going to use. For, for every cubic inch, there are 16.3871 milliliters. So one inch equals 16.3871 milliliters. I like dealing milliliters because that is how it's sold. And the measuring cups have a really nice scale for milliliters to use, so it makes it much easier. So now then all I need to do is multiply my cubic inches times my uh, milliliter per inch, and I come up with 1290 and a half milliliters required. Echopoxy says to mix one part hardener with two parts of resin for a total of three parts. So because this is bigger, and I will show you a container here in a second, this is larger than my container can handle, at least the one I'm using. Uh, so what I'm going to do is take that figure and divide it by three. So now I have my three parts. So in 1290 divided by three is, make sure I've got this right, three, four, and three, 430. And for my resin calculation, I'm just going to multiply 430 by two, come up with 860. And then for a hardener, it would just be that one part, 430. These two figures should add up to this as a check. This is how I'm going to mix my my final mix. And for my mixing, I prefer a smaller container. Uh, it is primarily because the scale is a little more precise. Uh, these are going in 10 milliliter increments, which is really nice. Uh, the scale does change as the volume becomes greater because they just can't get enough lines into here. It is marked in ounces and cups as well, if you like dealing in that. Again, I like the milliliter because that is basically a little more accurate, a little more precise, and the product is sold via the liter. So in my last example, I said I needed 860 milliliters of the resin. So I'm going to come up the scale. And here is my mark for 850. So I need to go about the thickness of a line above that to come up to 860 milliliters. I am then going to take and dump that into my big, big mixing tub, because as you can see, this holds a maximum of 1,000 milliliters, and my pour is 1,290, so can't really get that into here. So I'm gonna to have to use another big one. So that's my two parts of resin. My one part of hardener would be 430, and looking at my tub once again, here is 400, Halfway is 425, so I need to go about a, a line above the 425 mark uh, to come up with 430 parts of the hardener. Uh, the scale to the right of the milliliter scale is pretty handy, too. They have different ratios set up. This is 1 to 1, 2 to 1, which is what we're mixing on the other side. There's a 4 to 1 and a 3 to 1. Depends on the product you're using. But here is the drawback to using this scale, which is again is pretty handy. The top one needs to equal my amount. Well, again, I'm going for a total of 1290. That's not going to work on any of these. But let's just look at this top line here. This top number one, if we follow it over, it appears to be set for 750 milliliters. 
So if my calculation came up close or basically on 750 milliliters, I can use this scale versus milliliters and not have to do any math. And what would I do? For my two parts of resin, I would fill up to this line right here. And then I would take my hardener and I would continue to fill to this line right here. And that would give me 750 and it automatically gives me my uh, ratio. So you might find this scale handy as well. Uh, I do occasionally use it. If my total comes up close to where these, these primary ones end up on milliliters, I do go ahead and use it. If you're just trying to make up a gob of the stuff and, you know, you think, well, you know, maybe half of this container would work, then I would take and pour resin up to this line right here, and then the hardener, I would continue to pour until it got right here, and that would give me this much material. Okay, guys, that's the uh, quick and dirty on calculating volume. Any questions, leave them in the comments. If you've liked what you've seen, give me a thumbs up. Appreciate you watching. God bless. Keep up the great work.